aside to look at Bible prophecy. We've been doing this for two years this month. We actually started in October of 2006. Uh, we happen to believe that what is taking place in the world today is a fulfillment of a host of Bible prophecies that we have both in the Old and New Testament. Typically, we focus our attention on Israel. Uh, we see Israel, uh, as it's been called, as God's prophetic uh, clock. For today's prophecy update, I want to uh, sort of broaden the scope or widen the screen, if you will, and look not only at Israel specifically, but the whole world globally. It seems to me that now, more than ever, the world is ready for a global leader who will have stunning charisma and with that have the answer to solve the world's problems. The last couple of weeks, this sort of hit me in a profound and even powerful way. You see, the Bible's replete with prophecies about this global leader. He'll present himself as really the savior of the world for the citizens of the world. It'll be that, as it's been called, that new world order. Uh, the scriptures are clear that this man will himself be none other than the Antichrist. Now, I think there's a misunderstanding about who the Antichrist is. The Antichrist is not just against Christ. The Antichrist is in place of Christ. I think it's germane to our understanding to know that and to even understand that and why it is that the whole world will follow after him. Even now, the world is, I believe, like never before, ready for him. I mean, this is just absolutely astonishing to me. Uh, it seems that the world is not only ready for him, the world is even begging for him. Uh, they need a Messiah. They need a Savior. They need someone who can take the lead, take the helm, because there seemingly heretofore has been a vacuum of sorts that has been created in recent years. Now, here's the thing, and this is why it's germane to our understanding to know that the Antichrist comes in place of Christ. See, the world will accept him, be deceived by him. Why? Because they'll reject the true Messiah, the true Savior. Pastor Chuck Smith once said that uh, when you reject the truth, you will believe any lie. And this is really what the Apostle Paul said to the Thessalonian church in his second letter, chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, when by the Holy Spirit he records the following. The coming of the lawless one, speaking of the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Did you catch that? The reason why they were deceived is because they did not receive the love of the truth. You know, this really answers a lot of questions for me and for you too. How is it that someone can actually believe in evolution? I mean, let's be honest. Does it not require more faith to believe that you came from the goo to the zoo? Do you? I mean, that's, that's profound faith to me. <laughs> I mean, wow. Uh, it makes sense to me, though. If I reject the truth 
of creation that in the beginning God created the heavens, the earth, and the sea, and all that in them is. If I reject that truth, then I'll believe the most bizarre of lies. The Lord takes it a step further when he says, and for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. See, here's what I'm thinking. The world's going to accept the Antichrist because the world has rejected Jesus the Christ. So they're going to believe him, and God's going to give them over to that. And lest you believe that or think that God is being unfair to them, please know that when it says he will send them a strong delusion, he's already, they've already made up their mind, sealed their fate, and he's giving them over to the hardness of their sin-calloused heart, if I can say it that way. They're already damned. They're already doomed. Their mind's already made up. And the Spirit of God will not strive with man forever. And God will never force himself on a man or a woman. We all have our own free will, our own free choice, and we can choose to believe whether or not Jesus is who he said he was. Who did he say he was? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you reject him as the way, you reject him as the truth, and you reject him as the life, then you have made up, made up your mind, made your decision, and now you are open to the satanic delusion, the satanic deception, and you will believe a lie, all because you rejected the truth. And that's why the world will, in fact, worship him. He will seemingly, one-handedly, with one stroke of his pen, so to speak, solve the entirety of all the world's problems. He'll bring about a resolution to the global economic crisis, the world's religious wars, and actually even unite nations governmentally. One of the striking realities to me in the scriptures, in the prophecies about the Antichrist, is that he doesn't set up a one-world government. He doesn't set up a one-world religion. He doesn't set up a one-world economy. It's already there for him when he comes on the scene. All he does is essentially flick the switch. The wiring has already been run. The switch has already been connected. And he's just waiting. Right now, according to the Apostle Paul to the Thessalonian church, we're the restrainer. See, the Antichrist cannot be revealed until Jesus Christ comes back and raptures his church. That's encouraging to me. I don't really want to meet this guy. (laughs) Here's what I'm thinking. We should be looking for Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist. Well, why are we talking about the Antichrist then? Because if the revelation, the unveiling of who the Antichrist is seemingly pretty close. How much closer is the rapture, which has to take place first? Uh, Have you noticed that the world's got a few problems right now? Men's hearts failing them for fear right now. I mean, we are in some serious, deep kimchi, (laughs) if I can say it that way. Uh, So he's going to bring about the solution. And I believe this is his time. And this is his moment. As he answers his destiny to remake the world and fellow citizens of the world will hail him. And even we're told, worship him. He'll bring about a Seemingly a solution.